film you're about to see tonight, uh, one of the great things about uh, programming a festival like this, aside from getting to go to all the festivals and bringing back a virtual greatest hits for all of you here in Chicago to see during this wonderful week, uh, is discovering new voices in film, which is pretty much a mission statement or should be of any film festival. And myself and Brian Tallarico, uh, when we saw this movie at Sundance, we knew we had found one of those voices. Uh, it, this is a film that, uh, when, when you go to a festival and you see 20, 30, 40 movies, as some of us insane people like to do sometimes, uh, you're frequently asked, how do you keep all the movies straight in your head? And one of the things I tell them, like, well, it's very easy when you have a film that sticks with you and you keep thinking about it and you keep thinking about the feelings that it invoked and the great performances by John Cho and Haley Lou Richardson and the compositions that help just inflate the performances and the feelings. So, the director of the film is here tonight, and we want to bring him on stage because we're so happy uh, and honored to be showing this movie to you tonight. Uh, please give a warm Chicago welcome to Coconata. Thank you, guys. Thank you. What are you guys doing here? It's like a Tuesday night. It's nice weather. The Cubs are playing. Um, but you guys are my kind of people. I like that. <laughs> you guys, uh, that's fantastic. Um, thank you guys. Uh, that, that means quite a bit. Um, this is very, very surreal because um, I have so many memories uh, watching films here. Uh, and I love the city of Chicago. Um, I'm a big you know, fan of Scott Tobias, so just to be able to have a conversation with him uh, later uh, tonight is a, a big deal for me. Uh, when my producers, uh, when we were looking through the invitations, you know, when I saw the Chicago uh, Critics Film Festival, I said to them, I don't care about, you know, this is the one I wanna go to, I wanna accept it. Um, Chicago film critics, I, I feel like in some ways, I'm a product of that. You know, I lived uh, in Chicago uh, during a period when uh, Rosenbaum was writing for The Reader. I once saw him at an airport and kind of stalked him. I saw him <laughs> from afar and he had a big, you know, it was like uh, weekly bread for me to, to, to read him and then care. So uh, it's a big deal and I, I'm, I'm so glad to be a part of this. So thank you guys so much and uh, hopefully you guys will stick around and we can talk afterwards. Thank you. Uh, I'm, uh, uh, my name is uh, uh, Scott Tobias, I'm a film critic for NPR and other uh, outlets. Uh, uh, please welcome uh, to the stage the writer, director, editor of the film, uh, Koganana. <laughs> all right, so I'll, I'll ask a few questions and then, you know, open things up for, for, for all of you if you have questions as well. Um, I just wanted to start with something, you know, you know basic, which is, um, you know, th this seems like such a specific idea, um, um, almost like a short story, it's so particular, like, it, it also feels very personal. Like, what, 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 what's the, what are the origins of this film? Mm. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I definitely, it's personal. I mean, it's not autobiographical, but, but it is I, in the way that uh, it, it's, um, you know, it's about absence and, and its relationship to presence, certainly in, in the realm of uh, our, our, our family relationships. You know, my, my parents are getting older, so uh, their departure is uh, heavily on my mind. And um, I have two young boys, and they're um, growing up, and their departure <laughs> is heavily on my mind. You know, I think there's that weird period when you're at this age where the two people, you're in the middle, and the, the two kinds of uh, the, the generations uh, are about to leave you, and you feel that, you know, whatever that weight is, you, you feel. And um, so, that, so that, I knew I was wanting to explore that. Um, 
and it's something that I know, you know, I'm, I'm a, uh, just a big, uh, been deeply influenced by Ozu, and of course that is his primary subject, and it is uh, such a universal subject. You know, we all know what it's like to be children and the burden of all of that and, uh, in, in all directions. So, uh, so that's really personal. And, and then the question of forms, you know, when I, when I uh, visited Columbus, uh, which was completely separate from the film, I had just read, I had been reading about it, I, I read about the uh, New York Times, I think NPR had a piece on it, and I was like, what is this crazy town that is like, you know, uh, so I visited that town and I, I think, you know, by lunch I was like, I have to make a film there and, and this story that I had in my head, it really sort of came together. But the question also of like, do forms matter? Does art matter? And if so, how? You know, so those, those questions, yeah. So, I mean, you, you as a first time director, you're able to assemble such an incredible cast. Uh, how, how did that process come about? I mean, how, how, did, it, how did everyone come together? Yeah, um, no, I feel so fortunate, um, and they're all really great, you know, human beings and great souls, and so, um, uh, you know, the, uh, when I, I wrote the script, and uh, Chris Weitz, who's one of the producers, he had uh, wanted to read it, and he really responded to it, and it was like, I want to help you make it somehow, and uh, he immediately, he has a relationship with John Cho, and he's like, I want uh, John Cho to read it, do you mind, you know? And uh, you know, if you guys are part of the you know conversation of Hollywood and diversity and the casting, you know, uh, that's a that's a big subject. But I didn't make the film thinking, oh, I have to have an Asian actor. But it, you know, I wrote what I knew, and I, I knew that this person who was going to be in Columbus and sort of stuck there was going to be from uh, the other side of the world. So I thought, well, he should be Asian, you know, because I, I understand that. And anyway, all that to say. Um, he said, can I let John read it? But I, I want to say this because diversity is an issue and is such a problem that I, as an Asian uh, filmmaker, had a hard time even imagining John Cho in that role. And the reason why is because I had never seen John Cho in a role like that. And I fell into that exact trap, right? And I had never seen, and then it only took me a, a second to think, oh, I'd never seen him in a role like that because he's never been offered a role like that. And when he read it, so, you know, I was like, yeah, sure, let him read it. And he called and we immediately talked and it was like, John Cho, you know, studied at Berkeley. He studied theater. He's been wanting to play human forever. You know, like not just a sidekick, you know, but he was, he was like, oh, I just to play someone quiet. You know, he talked about Truffaut, you know, this John Cho that we don't know, right? Because he's been a working actor playing, you know, like friends and these sort of like roles. And so it was really like, I, I felt chastised by my own, like this is like, we don't see that enough of that representation, the, the, you know, limited. But anyways, he was the first on board and he was just really like, you know, um, there, uh, like really wanted to be a part of it and was really generous. And then, um, yeah, and then everyone else, uh, Haley Lou, I knew that this, um, the the uh, Casey role, Casey's role. I knew that I wanted someone who was not very very well known because um, uh, because she was going to be this working class girl and and you know just having someone very well known. I, I I just you know and I love discovery in films. You know when you don't know someone really well and you discover them. Um, but you know again I come from the sort of film theory criticism side and not the mechanism of filmmaking which was a real eye-opening experience and I understand you know like financiers you know that was a question uh, but um, I had some people who really fought for just like let's let's try to do it this way um, but uh, yeah so I had seen Haley in a small a uh, couple really small things and then met with her and she just is has this incredible presence and um, and so once we had those two on board, then yeah, we kind of filled it out. Did it help as a f first time filmmaker to have, you know, I mean, John Cho, Parker Posey, these people, they've been around for such a long time or such, such pros. I mean, were there kind of a steadying presence for you? Yeah, I mean, Parker was, was great, you know, and Parker, um, you know, but all of them, yeah, absolutely. I think that I was really fortunate to get to make this first film with people, and all of them were real pros. You know, Rory Culkin, mm -hmm. you know. I, I think love. he's the best Culkin. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's my favorite Culkin. I don't know if I'm allowed to say that, but I, 
you know, uh, loved him on You Can Count On Me, uh, you know, just incredible, and he was incredible, and uh, Mishka Forbes, and so they were all real professionals, I, so it did me, you know, I mean, I really benefited from them being so seasoned, and yeah, they were definitely that sort of staying presence. Um, so talk about the town, it's such a unique place, and it figures, how did you want um, that location to figure to figure into the story you were trying to tell, and how did it also inform the way you photograph the film and compose the film? Yeah, you know, I think I saw some people from Columbus. Like, is there there? Okay, and yeah, she's like a tour guide at Columbus, and she really helped us out. <laughs> is there anyone else from Columbus here? Anyway, oh, great! I can't. Okay. Oh yeah, right. He was our uh, on-set photographer. Um, I can't see, I'm sorry. Yeah, it's very bright. Um, but um, yeah, so anyways, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, when I, the reason why I thought I have to, I have to shoot a film, you know, the question, and I was a graduate student, and part of my research was this question of modernity and, and modernism and, uh, and the, the, the things we have to tackle as modern beings and the way in which both art and philosophy, that we're all sort of tackling this question of what it means to be modern. And when I, uh, so that has always been a question that has interested me. And when I saw this town, I felt such, um, you know, like it, the town itself had its own story. And I thought if I didn't even have any characters and we just shot this town, it would be telling a story about the promise of modernism, the, the, the limits of that promise, the possibility of that promise. It felt like a ghost town to me in a way, like it had its own story to be told. So it, it really, I do, the town was really significant. Like once I encountered that town, it felt like, oh, this town is telling a story that's really important to me, you know? So um, yeah, and then this, this question of for this uh, space and place, uh, and the environment uh, of a place and its relationship to characters uh, would be, you know, is, is a big part of how we make sense of this world and, and modernism itself as a, a movement um, is, a, is a big part of how we try to make sense of it. So I knew that I wanted to shoot it um, um, yeah, it, it, in a particular uh, way, uh, in a particular way of representing that space. I don't want to bore you with all the details of that, but um, it was uh, really important. And in fact, we knew we only had 18 days to shoot it, and we knew that we were going to privilege the setup of those shots over coverage. You yeah, know? well, that was the actually my next follow-up, because what, one of the things that really stood out for me about the, the film, again, I keep saying you're a first-time filmmaker, but, but the confidence that you have um, to go with a go with a very difficult master shot and leave it and leave it that I think about think about the scene scene toward the end when you have uh, uh, John Cho and Parker Posey sort of framed in a mirror and that that is that is the shot and, and to have the confidence to 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 play out a really important scene in the film in that um, uh, in that way without having to cover it in a more traditional way I mean that took took a certain amount of Courage. There's no question there, but but I'm just saying. Yeah. I mean, maybe the question is is like, was anyone telling you like, don't do this? This is uh, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. this is well, this is unadvisable to the, to shoot a film this way. Yeah, I mean, I think that there was like some nervousness, but again, you know, Chris uh, White, who was one of the first producers, and you know, he's a, also a part of this real Hollywood world. He he wrote uh, Rogue One, Star Wars. You know, he's like an unlikely partner in this. You know, he like directed one of the Twilight movies. Um, he, but you know, what I didn't know, again, this was a real like humbling process because you know, one can make judgment, let's say in the art house world, and John Cho was this guy who loved cinema and trying to make, you know, this world from, and, and Chris White's, you know, his grandfather was Ingmar Bergman's um, uh, agent, and he grew up with Ingmar Bergman, uh, like, like coming to his house, he called him like Grandpa Bergman, and, and, and I didn't know this, you know, and then he like is, loves Ozu, and that's how we even made a connection. So he, he was on board and he kept on saying, just per, like, let him do what I trust him, let him do what, what he's gonna do, which is like, you know, like incredibly fortunate for my first film. I mean, it, and so 
there was, I know when once the financer and producers, you know, there was a little bit, but there was a kind of, we all got along, there was trust. Um, that particular shot, you know, um, yeah, I loved, and we, had, you know, we had planned to do, to cut into it after uh, we, you know, th that was the plan, but after we did that scene, you know, I remember Parker saying, uh, you know, and we, uh, we had a conversation, we're like, we, I think we got it. We all agreed, we're like, we got it. And, you know, they were setting up, we were setting up, and we were like, do we, no, we got it. You know, we felt real confident. And yeah, it was pretty, um, it, this was, we kind of just looked at each other and said, why do we need to shoot it? We have it. So yeah, we, we just stuck with it. Right. Yeah. I, mean, I don't want to monopolize that. Do we, there's some questions here. There's a microphone there. If anyone wants to ask some questions, I, I have some more, but, uh, but uh, yeah, if there are questions for, for the, the director, we can, uh, there's a microphone. Is there any other microphone or is that the only one? That's the only one. That's the one. Um, so, what, 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 uh, first of all, I should, um, uh, you know, th this is, um, you're well known, at, le at least in some circles, as a video essayist. Uh, and if you all have not seen his video essays, they're extraordinary. If you go to, to your website, which is your co co uh, coconutisle.com, um, uh, you can see essays on, on uh, Ozu and Bresson and Godard and Linklater. And, and uh, you know, I, I, if you're the sort of person whose eyes glaze over at the thought of a, of a video essay, I can assure you these are just, these are extraordinarily dynamic um, and, um, and uh, thrillingly edited and, and will really make you think a lot about form. So I, I would recommend checking that out as like supplementary viewing because it's, it's terrific stuff. Um, but I was curious, um, you know, it was, there, was there anything that sort of carried over? You edited this film, so, so, so that, that must have carried, that experience as a video essayist must have carried over to, to, to this. Uh, w what else did, and then what, where, where did you, do you feel like there was kind of sort of a learning curve for you? Yeah, I mean, um, it, it was great. I knew that I was gonna get to edit, so it did allow me for, to say, yeah, we don't need it, because in my head I knew that I, I, I would probably just stay on that. And throughout the film, you know, like the knowing that I was going to piece it together really helped us make decisions really quickly. And I was kind of re-editing, you know, uh, shots in my head. Um, and, and then, you know, those pieces that I do are very much about uh, form and the relationship to cinema. You know, uh, and you know, some of some of those are just my, you know, are, there's no lesson to be, you know, I, I didn't, I've, none of those are about like trying to teach anything. It's it's really about me trying to exercise certain kinds of uh, forms that I'm I'm thinking about or that I know that a director is obsessed with, and so I feel obsessed with with what what they're where, what they're playing around with. So I have always sort of. Um, yeah, I mean, that's always been important to me. But not form for form's sake or something that feels really alienating, but just, I think, that question. So, like, that definitely uh, came into the filmmaking process. And, but, you know, like, I had never worked with actors, you know? And so I think that, the fi I think everyone felt like, oh, he might do something visually interesting, but how is he going to be with actors? And I didn't know, honestly, you know? But it turned out to be, like, one of my favorite things, you know? So, yeah, yeah. Any other questions? Hi, thanks for being here. I really, really enjoy the film. Um, one thing I was curious about is just, uh, I guess closer to the beginning of the film, there was a few conversations that John had either with on the phone or even just with himself in Korean, I assume. And I was just wondering why um, you chose not to use subtitles for what I assume might have been key conversations or not. Yeah, you know, because um, there are two reasons. One is that, uh, you know, I knew that there is this sort of like, I wanted to play with absence uh, just as a sort of uh, formal de device. And so, you know, like there, I knew that they would never go into, we would never get to see that hospital room, you know, that there would never be a scene there and uh, that there would be times where you wouldn't hear them talk or, you know, or that there would be times where they would be talking to someone and that you wouldn't see who they were talking to. And in this case, uh, and I mean, I have reasons uh, uh, why I felt like that was important, but, uh, and, and the same with like what we're expecting to, to know what he's saying. And I, I wanted us to deal with not knowing that. And also because in real life, you know, you don't get to know what uh, someone is saying if you don't speak their language. And so I wanted to, um, yeah, keep it, keep it that way, you know. Thanks. Yeah. 
Oh yeah, that was a beautiful, beautiful film. Um, I just had a question about the costumes. I love the costumes. How did those um, meetings go? Like, did you have an idea of what you wanted the characters to be wearing, or was that mostly the costumers coming in with an idea? Yeah, Emily was really great, and no, we we talked about that quite a bit. Um, and then she, you know, the process is usually, you know, I, I had a, a definite idea about. Um, you know, like what they would be wearing and the colors and, and all of that. And then she had her own ideas, as well. not her own ideas, but she had ways to kind of that she envisioned that and then gave me a kind of board of, of like possibility. So, um, yeah, it was a real good collaboration. She was great at that. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for hearing your film. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, earlier in the film, uh, Jen. Casey was treating Jim to one of her favorite buildings, and uh, he asked what moves her about it, and her reaction was muted. Um, I wanted to ask you how that decision, how does that uh, relate to Casey's character arc that we're about to see in the rest of the film? Mm, that's a great question. And uh, my, 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 the, 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 what I'm wrestling with is like, um, would it be good to answer that, you know, completely, you know, because uh, I don't know if it would be. But it was, you know, I will say that they didn't know that I was going to, you know, uh, that we weren't going to hear them, that they did have dialogue there. Um, but I knew, you know, and it was confirmed when I was editing, you know, because I, I had an idea of... Um, of what we're ready to hear and what, what matters anyway in that conversation, you know, in regard to that. So, um, yeah, so I would say that it matters, you know, but uh, maybe, the, maybe the content of it isn't as, as important as, she, as, as we're seeing a young person who's starting to kind of be awakened to, in, in her case, you know, uh, architecture, in my case, cinema, you know, I mean, in some ways, Casey, that, that's a real, per like, Casey is, is definitely me at a certain time, a kind of desperate time to need, you know, and, and, and finding some space to breathe and move, and the, the great thing about art is, like, I think if one thing moves you, you, sh you become receptive to other art, you know, so, yeah, yeah. Okay. Hi, thank you so much, that was a beautiful film, and, um, that um, as someone who has a, a had a fraught mother-daughter relationship, it was very relatable, so that was wonderful. Um, I didn't, I'm a bit of a score junkie, and I, I didn't catch the name of the score composer at the end, yeah. um, but I was wondering if you could tell me the name, and yeah. also how you sort of decided on the sound that you would go with for the movie. Yeah, yeah. I'm, well, first of all, I'm glad you said that about mother daughters. You know, I uh, I'm surrounded by really like daughters that carry the weight of family. My oldest sister is like someone who bears that uh, uh, every day. And my wife, you know, we moved to Nashville a few years ago so she could take care of her father. Um, and there is a way in which I think daughters feel the weight of their family in ways that are so, and I think sons feel it, but I think daughters are, like to me, they're like, they, they uh, yeah, the way they absorb family and feel responsible is something to behold. And, I, and, I, and so that, that was an important to me. I, I think that's, uh, yeah. Anyway, all that to say, um, the, the music is by Hammock. Um, and, uh, you know, I kind of knew that I wanted something that was, would blend with the environment quite a bit. And uh, I had heard about uh, and, and had heard their music. And, um, you know, throughout, like, the people I was talking to, I was like, you know, I, the, you know thematically, I want to explore absence and presence. And I was thinking about Hammock, and then I found an interview, and they were like, people were like, well, what are you exploring? And they were like, we're trying to explore absence and presence in our music. <laughs> so I got a hold of them, and I was like, listen, you know, and they had never done it, and they were like, yes, let's, let's do it. So, yeah, yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah. There are many aspects of the film that I appreciated, and I'm going to try and, I'm going to somewhat feedback on, uh, I just want to commend you on the collaboration with Hammock. Um, there is a lot of absence of sound in the, or music in the movie as well. Can you
Can you talk about uh, maybe the green collaboration with Hammock or your uh, intention of just letting us hear footsteps, rain, water, wind? Can you talk about that? Yeah, I mean, that was, um, and you guys are great. These are the best questions ever. Um, <laughs> they really are. Um, but yeah, I, um, you know, one of our conversations was um, that um, the everyday sounds would be, be the music, you know, and, um, and any way we could uh, have the rhythm and the kind of uh, the music of everyday uh, life, uh, the better. And, you know, even to the point of, of um, we, uh, I, I was really, again, so fortunate throughout this whole process that we did the sound design at um, Skywalker, and they're obsessed with, uh, with sound. They're really, that's their art form, and they were so delighted to, for it to be something like a kind of symphony. You know, we talked about, like, there's kind of a symphony of sounds in this little town. There's something that's both industrial, but also like, you know, this mix of nature. And then we asked Hammock to not overtake that, but to try to kind of build music that was textured around that, you know. And yeah, that, that was the, the, the struggle. Yeah, it's complimented really well. Congratulations. Thank you guys. Yeah, you guys are, you know, whenever they do a screening like this, people are always so generous to the filmmaker. I remember sitting, uh, in, in, you know, and, and sometimes maybe not liking a film, but realizing that everyone is generous because you would never say, like, go, hopefully no one comes up and says, I, you know. But <laughs> I'm sure the questioners coming yeah, up. Yeah, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure there are people who are sitting there and they're like, yeah, it's not so great. And that's fine. <laughs> Just don't come up here and, and embarrass me. <laughs> It's completely fine. I've, I've, I've definitely sat there and maybe I've thought that myself. Well, I thought it was a great picture. Thank you. Um, but I'm curious about your interest in architecture. You said you had this idea for a story, and I wonder if it was the family stories, which were really very interesting and complex, or whether you had that idea and then you overlaid the idea of architecture yeah. and design on top of it. And yeah. No, I'm a bit of an architecture nerd, you know. I mean, I'm, I'm a more of a so film. So you know about Columbus. Yeah, yeah. Well, I read about it, and I was surprised because I love, or, you know, I love Chicago because of their architecture, and it's like the, the best, you know, architectural city, I think, in America. But um, I uh, love it, and, and I was so surprised that this town was so close, and I had not really known it much about it. And so, yeah, I was drawn because of the architecture, you know. Because I love, I love how uh, I, I love the questions that modern that architectures ask. They're big questions, and they, they feel like they can, you know, change the world. They used to feel like that, and and I, I sort of love that, you know. And well, I, I think love kind of the, one of the emotional high points of the entire picture was when she said how Deborah Burke's building saved her. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I knew that her that you know that 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 bank building is like really, mon you know, I love it because it's like, could be missed, you know, I love that, the, that, that particular bank because it wouldn't be the obvious choice for Casey to be like moved by, and, I, and, I, and so I sort of loved that that was it for her. So. Thanks. So I guess to, to, to wrap up, I wanted to, to, to ask um, what the distribution plan is for this film, so people, uh, if they want to tell their friends to see oh. it, if, if what, what, uh, how they might seek it out, and if, if you can reveal what that plan might be. Yeah, so, you know, after Sundance, we got a few uh, offers, and as a filmmaker from distri distributors that I, I adore and have great taste and all of that, but Sundance also um, approached us uh, soon after, and they had, uh, they're, they're initiating this fellowship, uh, distribution fellowship, fellowship because uh, they've been wanting to tackle creative distribution and um, our producers were really excited about that I mean there's a lot of reasons why um, it uh, would mesh well for a film like this because they're trying to figure out like films that are looking for a, a certain kind of audience so uh, we accepted this fellowship with Sundance um, which was very equivalent to this, the, the one distributor that we were really starting to think about uh, going with. So it's going to have a New York and LA theatrical uh, August 4th, and then it will start, uh, open to uh, uh, a number of cities afterwards. It will definitely be back. I mean, Chicago is definitely uh, one of the cities that's gonna uh, come back, I believe like mid-August. Uh, it might even be at the Music Box. Yeah, I would, if, if, if you are uh, sitting here and you feel like it's a, a film that you might want to encourage other people to uh, see, I would, I would ask that you, you do that. 
Yeah, yeah. And if you, if you don't, <laughs> if you're here and you hate it, then you would just be like, you've got to see this film. It's so awful. And everyone's talking about it. <laughs> Go see it. All right. Well, thank you so much, uh, Pokemon, everyone. <laughs>